Welcome to the first video in a series about things you need to know when buying a high-capacity lead-acid battery. In trying to select the correct battery to drive my inverter, I found myself submerged in a world of conflicting data, new acronyms, confusing specification sheets, and some somewhat confusing mathematics. It's enough to make a person say, ARG! In my quest to educate myself about batteries, I read several good books, then continued my education by using the internet. The only reason why I mention this is, much of the data on batteries is controversial. So I picked the most universally accepted information for presentation in these videos. When you head down to the store to buy a battery, the number one rule we'll talk about is, not all batteries are created equal. Two different categories are used to define batteries, their application and their construction. Application is further subdivided into three categories, automotive, marine, and deep cycle. Automotive batteries are designed for high current for a short period of time. Their primary use is to start vehicles. A deep cycle is designed to provide a low current for a long period of time. This is the battery you'll want for your inverters, your wind turbines, or your solar panels, and backup power supplies. Now, the marine deep cycle is kind of like a mutt. It's not like a purebred like automotive or deep cycle, so it can give you a medium amount of current for a medium amount of time, somewhat emulating a deep cycle. Or if you prefer, you can start your vehicle or boat with it, although it will not have as much cranking power as a real automotive battery. For a person that wants 60 hertz power in their car, they sell inverters that you can plug directly into your cigarette lighter. Sometimes, there's even an inverter built directly into the vehicle. Both these situations is fine as long as you follow one rule. Your engine needs to be running while you're using the inverter. That way the power is coming from your alternator, not the battery. If you run an inverter directly off the battery, you will significantly shorten the life of that battery. I also think it's noteworthy to mention fuses. Inverters built into a vehicle already have the proper size wires and fuses installed. Additionally, the inverter won't work unless the vehicle is running so your battery is protected. But let's say you plug a 100 watt inverter into your cigarette lighter. My cigarette lighter fuse was 10 amps. I'll cover this math later, but an 80% efficient 100 watt inverter will pull 10 amps of current. So you just blew your fuse. The point I'm trying to stress is, do not use an automotive battery in a deep cycle configuration. Moving on, deep cycle batteries are built very stoutly so they can handle much more abuse than an automobile battery. You can actually use a deep cycle battery to start your automobile. Since it's not designed for high current, your cranking current won't be nearly as high as your automotive battery, but you can fix this problem by buying a bigger deep cycle battery. Okay, here's an easy topic to research. Cost. By far, the cheapest battery is the automotive battery. They build these things by the millions. Coincidentally, they're also the shortest lived battery. You want to spend a little bit more money? The marine battery is your next choice in cost. And if you're interested in a deep cycle battery, dig very deep into your wallet. The manufacturers are very proud of their batteries and they'd be more than happy to relieve you of all that excess cash. So, you have a battery laying around. You want to figure out what kind of battery it really is. Here's some general rules you can follow. If your battery has a CCA rating on it, most likely you have an automotive starting battery. A deep cycle battery will usually be marked as deep cycle as well as an amp hour rating for how long that battery will last. One thing you want to be careful of is some vendors are very loose with their term deep cycle. So if you see a battery marked as deep cycle but no amp hour rating, I would seriously question the legitimacy of whether it's a deep cycle or not. And finally, not all marine batteries are deep cycle batteries as well. For example, the only marking on this marine battery is MCA, which indicates marine cranking apps for starting only. In part three of this series, I'll cover all the methods of rating batteries that I've just recently mentioned. As I've shown in this video, we've covered the application category of defining a battery. In part two, I'll cover how important battery construction is. Thanks for watching.